Okay, uh, David, uh, you're muted. Yep, if, I do have a bit of a deck that I want to be able to share if you can give me access. Uh, for That's sure. Sad. I'm gonna do that right away. All right, uh, you can share. Great, thanks. Um, all good. Um, so before I start, let me introduce myself. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for coming in and enjoying the talk. My name is David, or Dawoodin Farsi, as I was known as Shaya Knows Me. Um, and uh, today I am a director of product at a company called Ideal.com, a startup in Toronto that was recently acquired. And we're going through the transition of that. And I also teach at the University of Toronto. And in the program that Aslesha is taking uh, at the University of Toronto, MSCAC, which is Master of, uh, Master of Applied Computing at the University of Toronto Department of Computer Science. Uh, today's talk is mostly not technical in any way. Uh, it has nothing to do with software engineering or product management. Uh, I came into uh, one of these talks a few weeks ago and the topic was about choices and options and, and things like that. It got a bit of, we got into a heated conversation. So I proposed this today's topic, um, hoping that we could continue the conversation and uh, find some answers for ourselves. So uh, with that, let me share a screen uh, and then we can go through this. It's not a long uh, kind of a presentation, um, but we're gonna go through some of the things that I had in mind when it comes to um, kind of living a good life, what it means to me, and uh, hopefully a conversation around that. Um, before we start, um, I wanna share our agreement just to make sure because we're gonna be presenting different perspectives. Um, I'm here to learn. Uh, I have more questions than answers. So hoping that you come with questions and, and open, open mind. Um, I'm going to do my best to hold an open space and uh, facilitate objectively. Uh, so there will be conversations and perspectives that I'll try to honor. And when it comes to speaking, uh, let's talk about our perspectives, the eyes and not the used, which uh, kind of honors the, uh, the, uh, the perspective that we have. And at the end, I have a little bit of an exercise if you want to work through with me. So if you have time through this period, you can get a pen and paper, a digital notepad, whatever that might be it might be a helpful exercise for, for you to go through the exercise as well. So with that said, this is a picture of me probably about 12 years ago. I'm the person on the right. Um, I grew, uh, well, I didn't grow up. I, I went to Sheriff University in 2011, 27 through 2011. And I was in a dorm, not being from Tehran with four of these four people that were well, three other people that you see. And we essentially lived together for four years. And if you've lived in a dorm in Iran or any place, you would know that there's gonna be a lot of different kinds of conversation. And those conversations could be of any topic, politics, uh, economics, religion, anything. And many, many, many times, given that we're all coming from different sides of uh, Iran, uh, I was from Gorgon, that's where I was uh, raised and grew up. And we had someone from Adabil and uh, Aryan Mandrelsan is my friend as well, but we had people from all over. And our perspectives came with us. And in the conversations, um, usually would get heated and uh, end up in being, uh, getting to the core question of, do you believe in God? Are you a Muslim? Or are you practicing religion or not, right? So that's the foundation that everything ended up with. Uh, we didn't have a better tool to kind of negotiate and argue and discuss, so it would it would be an impasse. You either believe in something or you don't believe in it, and it's hard to prove one way or the other. Um, so that was our life. By the way, this is the best and most respectable picture I could find from dormitory days. So uh, those who went there know that it's probably less less glamorous as it looks. So. Um, what do I mean by that? So when we were getting there, um, usually without our perception, uh, we are primed by our society. That's kind of like the bigger umbrella that defines what good values are, what, what a good person is, what do they do? And that is impacted by culture and religion, depending on where you grew up, where you were raised. And inside that in a smaller community, um, you would have your own beliefs and value systems and, and goods and, and norms and uh, different kinds of things. And within that close circle, this could be friends, family, um, or people you see more often than not, um, essentially the, the five or 10 people that are close to you. And then at the end of it, we are we have ourselves, like the individual person that we're looking at, right? So a lot of the beliefs that we have of what is good and what is bad 
comes from all the way top to bottom, right? Society, culture, religion, community, school circles, and the self. And we may or may not be aware, growing up in a Gorgon, a small town that's not religious in any way, shape, or form, I grew up to be a little bit more uh, progressive when it comes to religion and culture compared to uh, my classmates at Yaz, for example, who came from a religious society. And none of us were aware of the things or the beliefs that we brought with ourselves. And that would bring us to kind of an impasse. So let's keep this in mind as, as something that layers of an onion of belief system, if you will. Um, when I was in the university, when I was in Iran, I had the more mindset of the left-hand side where uh, this is Mount Damavan, the highest mountain in Iran. Most of you may know, some of you may have been there. I climbed it twice, took a team there. Um, it's a challenging uh, exercise, if you will, or activity, mountain climbing. And uh, for, for me, the biggest thing was going to the peak, going to the top. Although most of the team, most of the people would, would not be able to even breathe easily. Um, it's something that you can easily see the vision, you can see the dream, you can see the goal and go to the top. And the journey in and of itself is a painful journey, especially you go for, if you go from the north side. Um, that was my mindset, set a goal, pay the price for it, no matter what, get there. Uh, and then when you get there, celebrate for a bit of a quick win and then come back down. Uh, that was the journey, that was the mindset. When I came to Canada, well, when I came to Toronto, we don't have any mountains here. Um, so I couldn't do mountain climbing and I get into biking or cycling. And um, I realized over the years that my mindset has changed a bit, although I still have a destination in mind, but I focused a lot more on the journey, what's going on, and uh, how I get to where I get to, enjoying the ride a little bit more uh, than I used to enjoy climbing mountains. So just a bit of a difference on focusing on the journey versus focusing on the goal. Just the kind of a contrast, a contradiction in terms of how I was thinking when I was in Iran versus um, when I came to Canada. Nothing related to the society in general, but just my perspective evolving. But then through that came to realization, okay, so what are other things that I could be looking at differently? What are other things that I could set the priorities for and digging through myself to figure out an answer for, for that? So um, a lot of uh, reading and digging into it, I'm going to read this in Farsi and translate for, for non-Farsi non speakers. So essentially thinking about, well, I'm always thinking, where do I come from? Where did I come from? Where am I going? Essentially the question of identity, who am I? And that's the question, it's a, it's a poem from uh, Molavi and um, it's the question that I've been struggling with and thinking through quite a lot. I've done a lot of digging into myself and different literature uh, to get to the answer. And I wanna to touch on some of the things that I've thought about just to open the conversation for us. Um, the first part that I want to talk about is uh, a book and a TED talk by Clayton Christensen, uh, who was a Harvard, Harvard Business School professor uh, and a graduate who passed away in 2020. And essentially in that book, he's, from my perspective, one of the most accomplished people in the world, being a professor at one of the world's top schools and having great work on there. So. Um, when you hear that question, how will you measure your life? What are some questions, some answers that come to your mind? If anyone's willing to share or throw in a chat, I would really appreciate that. What are the metrics to measuring life? Happiness. Um... Happiness is one. Any other thoughts? You look at someone, you want to say they, they've life. Same one? Desired results. Desire results, yeah. Essentially, accomplishments, yeah. Um, um, happiness, satisfaction, Im improving the lives of others, right? So we have different ways of looking at it. But what we do for the most part, and what uh, Clay talks about, which is very interesting, is that as humans, we have limitations in our perceptions of what good is. We can't understand the whole life of a person. We want to aggregate something. Um, we look at some kind of a number. We look at some kind of a sense of, for example, happiness is a good example. We look at people's titles and accomplishments and, oh, the most, the richest person in the world and all those kinds of things. 
All of that to say is because we have a limited uh, capacity to understand, process, analyze in, 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 in some shape or form, um, kind of capture the essence of life, right? So we're looking for simplifications and those simplifications are kind of taking the essence of, um, of, of the value when it comes to it. And then the other thing is a lot of the times when, we're, when we ask that question, uh, we're thinking about our perspective right now, right? So from my perspective today, the way I'm going to, I'm looking at measuring my life is happiness, uh, success, satisfaction, whatever it might be. Um, but if you think about it, um, or if, if you've read articles about people on their deathbeds, that's other than happiness, family time, connection, love are the other answers that come to mind or they talk about, right? So the perspective of what am I looking at? When am I optimizing for right now? Being a healthy young male, uh, whatever Canadian or whatever female Canadian, whatever you may have, um, our perception is different from someone who's about at the end of the life and looking back and figuring out, okay, did I live a good life or did I not go live a good life, right? Um, and then if you believe in life beyond this life um, as part of a religious thoughts, that might change the, the questions and that might change the framing as well. So um, I don't think there's an easy answer, but raising the question for us to say, okay, a lot of times we look at our perspective today, while down the line, we're not gonna be looking at our today perspective. We're not gonna look at what kind of accomplishment did we have today? What was our title? What was our uh, number of people that we were managing or all, none of those things. We're looking back, we'll look at some other aspects potentially. Um, so um, it's an interesting book essentially acknowledging the limitations of human mind and it opens up a few other things in the interest of time i'm not going to do that right now but we can we can go ahead so um when you ask the question then uh what is it that we want to kind of uh assess so um another book that i've read that helps me a lot is beginning with the end in mind in my mind looking at life uh, the end of life what do i want to have accomplished um, a lot of most of us well everyone here probably has a resume um, but when it comes to the end of life, nobody has a eulogy. When we die, what do we want to people to remember us by, right? And everybody has a different answer for that. Looking back, I want people, when, I, when David dies, I want them to say, David, this, David was this kind of a person, that kind of person, David did this, or whatever we measure. We don't usually think about that, right? And that's something that we're moving towards without necessarily being aware of um, how we're making the decisions. Like the everyday decision that we make kind of makes the life of whatever 60, 70, 80, 90 years life that we have. So I want to kind of frame the question that way. So we start thinking about that side of things. Again, if you believe in the, the life beyond life, we can totally think about that and look at the legacy and all those things as well. It's totally your frame of mind and how you look at it. Um, so when it comes to that and we're making decisions, um, the key things that I think we're going to be, will be defining our uh, who we are, our identity, and shaping up our uology more than our resume is going to be the values that we have. What is a value? Value is essentially the foundation of our identity, of who we are, what we believe to be true for ourselves. So what do we strive to get to? And the values are the things that will stay years and years uh, or like long time after a whole lot of other decisions are, uh, are gone and impacted, right? So you can think of them as as a pillar of a building. You may change the curtain, you may change the window, you may have a paint, but the foundation and the pillars are gonna be there, right? So again, looking at the end of life, if you were to write your eulogy, um, thinking about what do you want those pillars to be? What do you want to be known with and by? Um, there are many, many different answers I'm not gonna get to right now, but um, again, raising the question for us and I'll give you some time to say anything as well. I'm, I'm speeding through this at any point. If you want to stop me and have questions or thoughts, I'm happy to hear those. I know we have time at the end to kind of open this up, um, but uh, feel free to stop me if you want as well. So when we figure out who we are, when we figure out what, what our core values are, what, what we believe to be true, um, we have a better sense of ourselves, right? And a great way to see that is, I think most of immigrants would have experienced that in some way, shape, or form. Many of us are here at Iranian. We uh, grew up in Iran or lived in Iran, or at least know about the culture. We had a lot of defaults that when we came to Canada, sh were shaken up, were rebuilt, and were restructured. 
And then we, we got to a crossroad where we had to choose between, well, a simple example, do I want to wear my hijab or not? Uh, am I a religious person or not, right? That's something that in Iran, for the most part, is driven by the, by the culture and the society. But when you come to Canada, you have that option of freedom. A lot of people choose to answer yes, and a lot of people choose to answer no. Another example could be, do I want to, um, I don't know, things like drink publicly, right? So some of, some of those examples, when, when you're exposed to different cultures and different societies and different environments, we think about um, our options and our choices. And then the choices that we make shape up who we are as, as people, right? So when we define who we are, when we kind of figure out the, who the self is, then the direction goes back. We can start saying, okay, choosing the circle, uh, close circle of friends or family, um, and then all the way up to kind of like the broader perspective of the society, for example, right? And in all of this, um, one thing that becomes very important is defining the self, right? Sometimes you think of myself, David, um, who's giving this talk and I wanna prioritize my well-being, my accomplishment, my success, my happiness. And sometimes parents would know this very well. It's not about my happiness, but it's my family, my family's happiness, my kids, my children, and uh, my parents, my mom, my sister, all those things. And then you go to your community. I want Vancouver Center to be the best area or writing that it could be when it comes to politics, for example, when it comes to the livelihood of people. You go beyond that. You want to be a religious leader or a cultural leader or societal leader, right? So all of these things, you define where my focus is, who myself is, right? And um, that becomes also the priority. So the pillars of values that we have, and also thinking about how much we wanna go beyond the individual self that we're talking about. That's also another open question. I don't have an answer. Every, I think everybody will come up with their own answers and um, based on their capabilities, their interests and their passions, that could be something that, that we'll come up with. Um, so when it comes to the, the when we define the self, um, I mentioned the values kind of essentially guiding the decisions that we're going to be making. Um, over the years, I've done so many different exercises and so many different, I kind of read so many books on the topic and all those kind of things. And on the right hand side, I have a list of values from a book um, called Dare to Lead by Brene Brown. Uh, she has a lot of interesting talks if you are interested, but the Dare to Lead one is about leadership and um, how to how to kind of be a leader when it comes to uh, life, work, and uh, and uh, working with others. I'm gonna just read about a bunch of these things here. Family is a core value. What that means when it comes to family, that's my top priority. I'm not gonna sacrifice my family, uh, whatever that means to you, my children, my parents, for more more money, for example. Um, another might be um, openness. I want to be open to different perspectives, different cultures, different things. So what this means is that you're going to be able to kind of choose some of these things that define who you are and by extension define how you act and what you do. Uh, and uh, looking through these, uh, there are variations of the exercises that we can do. Looking through these, some of them could be, uh, you can pick five, seven, 13, um, sometimes two or even one. And then that becomes the kind of your, your uh, North Star, if you will, in, in terms of decision making. Um, and if you have that clarity uh, about what the value is, what you stand for and who you are, um, then a lot of decisions, although difficult, will become a little more simpler, becoming thinking about what is the essence of, of the thing that I wanna get to. So um, it's a whole long list. Um, you can easily Google it, uh, dare to lead, list of values. There's no one right answer. Everybody picks whatever, whatever works for them, right? Um, and uh, with that said, uh, the best example, the best way that I found that people can find their values, um, which I'm gonna get, um, get, get us to kind of take a few minutes to do, is by looking at the movies that we love, right? I just I literally Googled some of the most popular movies and uh, these are names that, that came up. Um, looking at the movies that we love. So my ask to you is think about a movie that you love uh, dearly. I'll pause so you can come up with an answer. I'll give you 20 seconds. Now, hopefully you have a movie. In that movie, think about the character that you associate with, you feel some kind of connection with. 
I'll give you 20 seconds. And then imagine the stories that the character goes through throughout the plot of the movie. What are some words that describe that character and their actions or beings? I'll give you a minute to just write down, brainstorm, write down the words that come to your mind describing that character. Whatever comes to your mind, don't judge it. Don't think it through. Just all the words that describe the character for you. It could also be the character that you hate the most uh, in all the movies. So even maybe in the same movie, the character that you hate, what are the words that describe that character? And then the negative of that potentially could be about, uh, it could be something that you can, you can be thinking about. So now uh, you have some words in front of you. Um, hopefully you've done the exercise. Uh, I know it's being recorded. Uh, it's a public event. Does anyone care to share? I'm not expecting anyone to put their hand up, but if, if you're brave enough, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Okay. Uh, I can stop the recording. Uh, yeah, I think Fatima put their I, hand. I... Uh, Put her hand up so we can we can if you let her share and then we can stop the recording but essentially that's the the, the gist of the talk um that's what i wanted to get to kind of come to here write down think about it and start thinking with the questions um and then finding your own answers whatever that might be um the rest of it i'm hoping will be a more open conversation about where we land um so you're welcome to uh stop the recording or uh continue to do so to, to capture the conversation as well Oh, uh, I, I meant stop the recording so Fatima can uh, speak freely. <laughs> I'm okay with either way. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I love the Harry Potter a lot and your um, kind of picture somehow helped me to just go to the answer. And um, Hermione in that um, Harry series was my favorite actor. Uh, the, the features that she had and that was so interesting for me was she ha always had answers to the questions and whenever they faced some situation, she looked it for, and for the answer and she finally find it. She was so eager to learn. Mm -hmm. Sometimes she didn't have any feelings for the others and just <laughs> that the aim. <laughs> that was mm -hmm. uh, somehow, she was so goal oriented, I can say. And yeah, this is the, the ones that I wrote. So thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate it. So with, within what I heard, if I, if I may, um, she knows a lot. She's, she's, her knowledge and wisdom potentially, her eagerness to get to the answer, so the curiosity and the drive to get to the answer, and then being goal-oriented. So those are like five or six that each one of those could be value, right? So that's something that you personally value, Fatima, based on what you explained. And I may have primed you with the Harry Potter um, uh, poster here, but um, those are the things that you value, right? So you're, you're finishing up your PhD now almost, right? So uh, kind of like you're living a life of that, not, not as dramatic and, and, and movie-like as, as it might seem, but again, shows, shows us some of the uh, things that you're thinking about. Um, thank you for sharing. Anybody else? The problem is I do not remember what these films for <laughs> and what, what, what's the story. This is my main problem. However, I remember just a separation and the, um, the amount of care. If, if I'm not, if I'm right, it's all about caring how the guy and that lady cares about that uh, old guy. I, if I'm right about the, the correct film, yeah. Uh, the the uh, the effort that they paid in the the try the the effortness to try the kindness the, whatever they did in the scenes for that old guy was really shocking for me and yeah I love the care that they had for him uh, that's that's interesting brings up two points uh, that I've experienced personally uh, thanks for sharing that Paymon one is that a lot of the times um, what we have an ideal world 
and we have a real world, right? When it comes to practice, there's something that we deeply value and, and want, but when it comes to practice and reality, we don't necessarily be able to go through those things, right? So with, for you, it sounds like their effort to taking care of a thing on the guy's dad um, was something that is valuable and then family, caring could be some of the values that could be driving that decision, right? The other things that as cliche as it may sound is, uh, Spectrum, I'll go ahead if you have an answer, I'll, I'll hold this as a thought. No, I don't have anything to share. Yeah, so um, the, other th the other thing is, as cliche as it sounds, we may not remember what was said or done exactly, but we know how things make us feel. Right. Uh -huh. So going back to the feeling that the feeling is the core of, of who we are. Right. We, we know a whole lot of things, but um, going to the feeling, what made us feel that deep connection, that deep uh, value or uh, or a belief, whatever that might be, is is a good way to kind of connect with us at a deeper level than uh, than just a superficial uh, technicality side of things. Uh -huh. Now I'm open, it doesn't have to be an answer to my question. I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on what you took of it and uh, if, if there are areas that you want to challenge. I kept it very short, uh, knowing that I was I was about to kind of ask, I was asked to finish it within 10 to 15 minutes or so, um, but I'm hoping that it triggered some questions for you so that we can talk through today. Okay, so uh, I, I don't have a question, but I have something related with uh, what you said about how to find uh, our uh, main values. Uh, uh, there's another uh, uh, systematic approach, uh, which uh, like we have the uh, one page values with like 100 values. Then uh, uh, the next step is uh, to choose uh, like 10, 10 out of 100 then reduce it to five, then reduce it to three, and then reduce it to one. And the main uh, point is uh, things come, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, things come clear when uh, we compare them. And uh, that's how we can find like uh, our three main, and like something between three and five is uh, uh, what do, the values we need to know uh, uh, how, how I know this and how I use it is mostly in uh, 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 personal uh, planning uh, workshops like uh, I, I hold four to five hour personal planning workshops and one thing people need to know to plan for the next uh, three to five years is to know their values so they can build something based and uh, related to their values. So uh, they can put uh, uh, so much energy and uh, time in it. And your way was uh, much more fun. That, that's not fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had only a few minutes to do that, right? So I've done that exercise. It's a painful, painful exercise to cut down like, ah, oh, I love this, but I had to put it aside and choose three or five. I've gone through yeah. that and um, I want to make it more enjoyable for the folks. So, but you're always, like you said, systematic, it's more structured and well thought out. And, and the fun thing is, if I may, is that uh, a lot of times uh, what we value as individuals, if you figure it out and what our family, friends, loved ones, society values, then there's a bit of a friction, a challenge there. And a lot of the soul searching and challenges, struggles that we have is when those values don't align necessarily well. And thinking through, do I wanna go with what I value or do I wanna go with what others think about, expect of me or what the value of the system and society is? Um, that's where there's a bit of a soul searching to be done there. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. Go ahead. You mentioned something which is interesting to me is uh, it was about um, values and the way that we behave based on those values okay i may have three four five core values okay the thing is how lo how loyal am i to those values i mean let's say that i one of my values is to be trustworthy okay but 
in executing that, sometimes I cannot be that much trustworthy. Okay, uh, which in my point of view, if you have struggles in performing based on those values and norms, uh, it means that. Um, in my point of view, it means that that value is not that much strong in you, mm-hmm. okay? As if it was strong, definitely you would do whatever you have based on those values and norms. And this is what I have in my mind. If I have a value, I have to stick to that, no matter what would be the result, okay? To be loyal, to, to tell the truth, to do, to do this, to do that based on my values. This is what I have in my mind. And, I'm like, and when I act based on those values and when I act through those values, I would uh, gain my self-satisfaction, which is I have a lot of respect for that. And this is what I, I always try to do. And I'd like to know your idea too. Um, that makes perfect sense. And um, the answer that comes to my mind, or the response that comes to my mind is um, a lot of times, this is a plot for a lot of movies where the the main character does something that doesn't line up, that doesn't sit well with them, right? Think uh-huh. of the, their values. And then it becomes a whole plot or a series of events where that person is not comfortable with who they are, with they're not they're at, at ease with the decisions they made. They're not... They need there's the, they feel some kind of a friction, right? They need to write that wrong for themselves to be able to sleep at night, right? And it's a plot of a lot of movies that nothing comes to mind right now, but uh, you, we can also connect to that, right? Yeah. Um, and the word that comes to mind here is integrity. The word integrity has many, many meanings uh, or definitions, but the one that I'm thinking about is having all aspects of ourselves, uh, emotional uh, belief system, uh, thoughts, whatever, kind of being well set together, right? And when you say my value is, I don't know, uh, trustworthiness, trust, um, but your behavior doesn't show that, guess what happens? Your, your mind's going to be busy. You're going to be consumed with that thought, oh, what did I do this? What's going to go happen? Like all those things. And then that kind of takes away the satisfaction, right? So um, value is something that you stand by no matter what. Uh, for me, value is something that you stand by. It, and it, it's going to be an extremely hard decision to do that when it comes to the actions, right? Happy to hear everyone else's thoughts as well. I'm, I'm being by no means an expert in this area. Quiet crowd, but so uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, uh, one thing that's interesting is that the value is only meaningful when it's challenged. Like I cannot say that I like like trustworthiness and uh, in general, unless it comes to a point that I am challenged and I choose to be to respect that value to have integrity. So yeah, it's interesting that they like. Uh, I was thinking about that exercise that what I will think that I have, I value more, um, like for example, one value compared to another one. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I will uh, act uh, accordingly when it comes the time to uh, act. If it's, uh, if it's difficult, if it's not the simplest solution, will I actually have the integrity to value my value or not that's that's a tough decision right so uh it there's no easy answer for this and also uh maybe that what you thought is the value is not your value maybe um i don't know safety comfort uh ease whatever some of those things could could be the value that you're, you're looking for right so um but even if you don't make the right decision and you don't, as Paymon said earlier, uh, it doesn't sit well with you, that could be a sign that, uh, that something needs to change. Uh, I, I think because values are uh, kind of uh, uh, unconscious, so 
we can uh, find out what real values are based on our, our actions. So if we think something is our value and we do something uh, with uh, uh, not completely aligned or uh, so maybe we're not uh, uh, using a, a, a method to find out how, which, uh, which is our uh, real value or what's the, uh, what's the uh, priority in our values, right? That makes sense. I think you start with something that's interesting to me. You said the values are something that are unconscious, right? Uh, for the most part, when we start, they are, they are something that we were not aware because we haven't developed the maturity or the awareness to be able to, to differentiate between good and bad, right? As we grow up, it's part of our upbringing and our training to help us, for example, in the simplest term, define what is good and what is bad, which is essentially inheriting a value system from our parents, from our teachers, from our society, right? And what we inherit from, from the people before us may not necessarily be uh, the absolute best. We may, they may not necessarily be the thing that is right, that we wanna follow, right? And the way I'm thinking about this is if we go through this unconsciously or subconsciously, this being life, at the end of it, like, oh, I didn't live, live the life that I wanted. I lived the life that my dad asked me to. And then when you're like 60, 70, when you don't have your dad around and you realize that, that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a hard truth to come to terms with. Right, so the reason I talk about it, I'm personally kind of conscious about these things is that yes, I do love my parents and I do respect their opinions, but I wanna find my own way, uh, whatever it may be. So when I'm 60, 70, 80, if I get to those years, um, I don't think to myself, ah, oh, okay, I didn't live the life that I wanted. I lived the life that my mom wanted. And why did I do that, right? So that, that, just that disconnect between uh, those two worlds um, is something that I'm honestly scared of. Not for me, like with the mom, but again, not being aware of the little life to myself. Right. In my point of view, that happens every, every day, every time for most of us because of this life that we have. We, we, I, I, can, I cannot say we, but I can say I. I chose, okay, because of what? Because you are so busy for uh, with everyday activities. And when you're so much busy, definitely some part of my activities would be unconscious, okay? And I may not realize, okay, is that activity aligned with what I have as my, as my values or not, okay? And when it continues, continues, at the end of the day, sometimes you get to yourself, okay, and said, Oh, you know what? You always said that you have to take care of your family. But where is your family now? What do you do for them? Or some other thing, let's say, uh, not first tier va value, I can say, but the second tiers or the second priorities. Uh, you would miss them, okay? Because, yeah, you, you cannot all the time think about values what you do what you're not what you do not what you should not do i'm in my point of view i have some values which i cannot never ever forget them let's say to be a trustworthy man okay that's that's not negotiable okay that's always there but something some other values which are not my first priority they could be sacrificed due to I can I, I don't know say how to how to tell them due to lack of time due to so much activities or business that people would have or due to some other things okay so we may have some sort of different types of values and then based on that you act and behave yeah definitely I think what uh, I agree with that the realities are not making things easier for us I think Mosa mentioned uh, going down to even one. So for you, it might be trustworthiness and then everything else kind of branches off of that, right? Um, so that's one thing to think about. But the other thing, I have a question. Like, I, I know the answer to this question myself. I know how many steps I walked. I know how much money I have in my bank account ballpark. I look at it almost uh, on a weekly basis, not a daily basis. 
I know most of us do the same thing as well. Uh, and I just realized I'm talking to financial advisors, so I gotta be careful. Uh, but, um, but the reality is, do we care? Do we pay more? We, I think most of us, I do at least, pay more attention to my finances a lot of the times than uh, what I stand for and the, the, those values. Obviously the values, I don't need to be looking at them every day, but I want them to be guiding my decisions, right? And, and then uh, they kind of pop up when there are critical decisions at, at a juncture in my life. Um, for me, then I, I bring them up and think through them. Okay, so who do I want to be? Who do, what do I value? And then go through them. Um, sometimes it, it, our, design, our, our life is not designed uh, for our values, right? Uh, because we come up with our values and every, every person's value is different. Well, everybody uh, in some way, shape or form uh, appreciates the money. So there are a lot of systems to kind of manage the money, but not necessarily systems to manage our values. Uh, it, it doesn't give an answer, I don't think, but it kind of acknowledges the problem you're talking about and the fact that making it so uh, is more of a personal decision rather than a systematic societal kind of action. Aklesha, I think your hand is up. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, um, so I just wanted to ask a question about the um, thing that I said before, like about living the life like values of other people or like what other people wanted rather than ourselves. Um, so I feel like in one way or other, um, also you saw that circle thing in the beginning, um, our values and all of our thoughts are um, in one way or other influenced by people around us or the society um, or our culture in general, right? So even if we make a choice, um, it is not really personal because it is influenced by something. Um, so is it like, is there something called personal value at all? Or is, are we just deceiving ourselves um, by thinking we're making a choice, but in fact, that is not really our choice. It's, it is influenced by something at the end. I think I understand the question. I'm gonna try to repeat it uh, and then correct me if I'm misunderstood it. Uh, so since you're asking, um, we may make our own minds about, uh, we may make our own minds about the values that we have but it may be in kind of an imagination of our values because we're kind of impacted by the society around us, by the people around us uh, and not necessarily yeah. the, the absolute truth. Is that right? Yeah, so in that sense, like, is there anything called living our own, like living a life with our own values or just living the life that we desire because that is influenced by others at some point? That's a great question. Um, it reminds me of, of that little old saying of um, fish swimming in water, um, where the two, two young fish were, were swimming in the water, and then an old fish comes in and says, hey guys, how's the water? And the, little, the, the two young fish go, well, what's the water? Or sometimes you're not aware of the environment that you have, right? So uh, you may have heard that story. A lot of the times, our response to that kind of question is, what is the water? To, to most, most of us, it's more of an unconscious thing than a conscious decision. I don't have a great answer other than to say, for me personally, the best way that I have learned to find out who I am is to travel. Because when I live in Iran, when I live in Canada, when I live in like, I don't know, Guatemala, Costa Rica, or another country, the people around me value different things. And then the question I ask myself is, what do I hold true to myself independent of what everyone else thinks around me, right? Um, they're presenting like traveling is, for me is the best way to kind of expose myself to different ways of thinking and being and feeling um, and living. And with, within those things, I see myself in a different context and I, I see, okay, I'm the kind of person who enjoys adventure in different places, right? So that's one of the things that I, I, I appreciate and enjoy. But I think changing an environment is, is one way to go, uh, but how much you can change your environment is very dependent on things. Um, Mehdi, I'm here. I'm happy to hear your thoughts. Yeah. Um, so uh, you touched on this and like on the follow-up on the topic, I think uh, uh, we are, we as immigrants have the luxury of uh, changing our society. So it didn't come easy, but uh, not most people have that luxury that they actually change their society to understand what are their values. 
But if uh, whenever you go through that process of immigration, it changes you and like it actually shakes up everything to the core. At least that was my experience. Okay, what is like because there's like, technically it's not a society. It's a different uh, value systems. Everything is changed, and because we here has the have the luxury of having a democratic um, liberal system. You can choose whatever you want and like and you don't have your family anymore you don't have the society anymore so so you can be yourself technically you can be yourself and that's i think something that uh, we can easily understand and say okay i will just pick this two or three and like be done with it and I, and also another thing that is is about the time like when you are in your 20s or in your 30s, you have some kind of values. and But those values definitely will not be the same when you are in your 50s and 60s, because now you have matured and you understood, okay, like that one that I was uh, striving to is not the case. Like having a wealth of money, like it's maybe something that crossed everyone's mind in, in their youth, but not when they are in 50s and 60s, because now they know something else is more important to them than just money. So yeah, that was my take as well. Okay, thank you for sharing that. that. That makes perfect sense to me. Um, before we uh, continue, uh, I want to ask everyone to take a group photo and then I want to ask uh, for our takeaway. Uh, yeah, for those who want to be in the photo, please turn your cameras on and we will be taking the photo shortly. So just uh, be ready. One, two, and three. Awesome. Uh, so Dawood John, uh, you don't have to answer now. This is a question that uh, we'll get back to towards the end of the meeting. But as we're an hour into the meeting, we ask our speakers uh, what our takeaway should be. And you have until the end of the meeting to answer that question. And yeah, with that, uh, let's go back to our, um, to our panel or to the awards. Uh, yeah, uh, that would one question. So you asked the question from us about the movies that you like and the uh, protagonists in those movies and their attributes that uh, we appreciate. What's your own answer to that? Um, I think in a way, um, all of these are movies that uh, that are I personally liked as well. So Saving Private Ryan, Taste of Cherry. Um, I think Taste of Cherry is the one that comes to mind right now with, uh, I don't know if you've seen the movie or not. If you haven't, it's been a long time out. So just spoiler alert if you haven't, but um, the, the part where um, the old man talks about him going to uh, attempt suicide and then finding berries on a tree and appreciating berries and changing a different, appreciate having a different new appreciation for life is a scene that I absolutely love because a lot of times it kind of touches on some of the things that we talked about as well. We go through life through the, through the moments and not necessarily conscious about a lot of decisions that we're making and thinking through, but there just going to kill himself. He finds a new appreciation to life with something as simple as a, as a little berry. Right. Um, and I love that part. Just it shows, shows me the value of life. I think a lot of these ones have have different one shape form the part that i like um another example for me is like up until so many years i could not imagine anybody wanting to be anybody other than harry potter but then as i learned i learned people appreciate hermione people appreciate uh luna and uh ron and all like all those kind of like, different uh, different other characters because hey people are different they value different things they want to be different people uh, and not everybody wants to fight the bad guys and, and go through adventures of their life and risk their lives for it. Uh, 
Thanks for the question, Shalane. Anyone so, else? Uh, want to share? I think Fatima, go ahead. Uh, Fatima, if you want to. Okay. So, uh, uh, relating to what uh, Mehdi and uh, uh, Aslisha uh, asked and your conversation with them, uh, I was thinking uh, maybe this uh, value and uh, the uh, personal value uh, uh, value model uh, we have is something that's like other things in life. We need to revisit uh, every year, every two years, and uh, see uh, because we are we are not uh, even. Uh, uh, from a biological uh, perspective, we are not something that doesn't change. Our cells change regularly and uh, our brain too. So I, I think we need to revisit this every, every at least every few years and see uh, what is, uh, what's, our, uh, what's our current uh, value model and what, what, uh, what are the values we appreciate the most and we should maybe change our life plans uh, and our relationships based on uh, uh, the changes that have been made uh, to our uh, values. And if, if we stay connected with them, then I, I really doubt it when we get to 60 and 70, we, just, we will face the question that, have I uh, lived uh, my dad's or my mom's life or their, uh, their uh, a life based on their values, based on, based on, based on uh, what uh, they uh, think that was true, good or right or true or, yeah, I, I think it's some kind of systematic approach like this, revisiting every few years, every two years, three years would uh, help us uh, have a, a align, more aligned life with our inner values. I think so. I definitely agree with that, Mohsen. I, I do that regularly for myself. I don't have timelines. I definitely don't do it on New Year's Eve or those times like most other people do, but I have regular times where I get to kind of think through this and ask questions because um, I think it's important and you're 100% right. We, we change quite a bit when it comes to these things. I and see you know, a hand. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Mohsen. One, one, one is also and you know, uh, there's, uh, there are studies about uh, planning and people who uh, achieve their uh, goals. And those who achieve their goals, uh, I think, those who write their goals uh, have like six, I, 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 I have a vague memory, but I think 70 or 80 percent chance to achieving the goals uh, compared with those who don't write anything down and have something in their mind. Yeah, yeah, so I, 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 um, I, I think that, that makes perfect sense to me because a lot of the times, um, if we were not put, if we don't put something in front of our eyes and we don't pay attention, um, the odds of us being able to achieve it is going to be low. So if you don't have the clear goal, then it's not going to be as, as likely. Um, and also to, to your point about values, sometimes I think the, the understanding is companies have values. I don't know if you, some of you may work in companies that have values like excellence, customer love, or those kind of things. Sometimes customers have values just to put on the wall. And nobody, including the CEO or the chairman or chairwoman, don't care, care about it, while some other companies think through the values and that kind of becomes the foundations of the decision-making process. Um, it could be the same with, with humans as well, with us as well, individuals. Um, Anahita? Yeah, uh, following what uh, Monson just uh, mentioned, I just wanted to add a, a small note that uh, in order to be able to uh, revisit uh, our values uh, like frequently or like at least once in a while. I think it's very important to uh, be careful uh, not to surround ourselves only by people or a community that uh, share the values, the same values that we have. So like keeping uh, diversity uh, is very important. And it's also very difficult, especially like uh, being welcome to have uh, uh, some people around us who have uh, opposite uh, uh, values or like different values is not always easy. 
And uh, nowadays it has become uh, even more difficult with the social media and the artificial intelligence that uh, is used in it, like that surround us by only people who have similar um, points of view uh, to us. So yeah, I just, and uh, like traveling that uh, you David mentioned is maybe one good way like to get out of this uh, bubble. Uh, yeah, just I wanted to add this very point. Yeah, thank you. That, uh, that That's a very good point. Uh, that makes me think of what Google and Facebook have learned to do uh, in terms of showing the blue folks, uh, the Democrats, just the Democratic uh, articles and postings and things like that. And, and same thing with the Republican side. And um, same could be with, with our political conversation these days uh, with our campaigns, just thinking about uh, liberal versus conservatives and not necessarily learning to hear the other side. Uh, great for you, Anahita. That, that makes perfect sense. And I do hope that we all learn to listen to people with different values and different thought processes as well. Any other thoughts or comments, I think? Um, uh, Amir asked me a question, so I'll, I'll just share my takeaway uh, and then we could probably wrap up afterwards. Um, my essentially my biggest takeaway from today's conversation is a lot. This is not something we talk we think about or we talk about. Um, I may be a bit of an outlier in terms of having this on my radar quite a lot and thinking about what I value and what kind of person I want to be. But I do acknowledge that people are very busy uh, and uh, a lot of times we go to autopilot. Um, and this is not something that is top of mind. While um, I think we have learned or society in general is designed a way that um, kind of nudges us towards keeping track of things as simple as how many steps did I have today or how many, um, how much money did I make today or how much money did I lose today and those kind of things, which is universal. But the society is not designed um, for us to keep track of what we value. And it's gonna be a unique system for every one of us if we care. Um, otherwise, it may be a bit of a challenging, uh, potentially midlife crisis or all the way down the line. Uh, for some of us to think through, oh, we didn't think through this, we went on through autopilot. And uh, that's not what I wanted. I never, I never made the decision to be an average uh, VP of something in a, in a company. And that wasn't, that wasn't supposed to be my, my priority, right? So um, if, a few things to think through for me, uh, definitely. But happy to hear everyone else's kind of thoughts and takeaways if you have anything to share. Uh, can you also uh, email me that uh, or send me a message or me and most or most and whichever? Mm -hmm. uh, that would be great. And yeah. The note that I just shared, or do you want the. No, no, the, the takeaway. The, well, the, if the, you want to okay. share the, the uh, group, uh, we can share that as well if you think that's necessary. Sounds good. Like, yeah, we'll do that. Awesome. Uh, yeah, the, that was uh, very valuable. And uh, yeah, uh, we still have uh, a 19 minute time. Uh, so if people want to ask questions or comment about stuff, uh, we can still do that. We don't have to end right now. Okay, what, I have a question. Uh, uh, what uh, what happened that you uh, uh, you uh, found found an interest in uh, these kind of stuff? Because uh, usually uh, 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 software engineers uh, like go on autopilot. <laughs> I've seen. Uh, I I have a lot of friends. Software engineer friends, but uh, I've seen few who uh, uh, notice this kind of stuff. Um, good question. I think some of it is by nature. I'm I transitioned to product management because I'm genuinely more curious about a lot of different things. And I think I've learned uh, when I was growing up. I thought, uh, as we say, for example, Honer as the Iranian as the best. Like art is with Iranians and only Iranians, right? So I'm like, oh my God, that was my world. 
Then I traveled, then I went to Singapore, then I went to Mexico, Ecuador, Colombia, all different kinds of places. Oh my God, I was blown away by how different people live differently, but also some of the things that are universal and shared with, with everybody. Um, Mexicans have something like a Chevy Alda. We, we didn't know that. I didn't know that. Uh, they have a long Mayans, uh, to be more specific and accurate. Mayans have a long tradition about what to do at the solstice night, right? Um, I didn't know that. And I learned that different, there are many different ways of living a good life. And um, most people in living in a coherent society, uh, if you've been in a, in a small rural town in Iran somewhere, you know, we're never exposed to something else. Uh, you never learn to ask that question. Uh, that's, 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 that's one thing that uh, my grandfather never had, right? Um, but now with the changing world, uh, at least for me, I learned to ask that question for the most part. And honestly, my biggest fear, I think, living a life that I would regret at the end. Uh, and um, as they say in, in many places, fear and love are the two emotions that drive actions at the end of the day. So for me in this case, um, I want to live a life that I, that, that I want. And I, I think through that quite a bit. Awesome. Thanks. Anyone else? Well, awesome. Uh, well, uh, we can finish 15 minutes early. I don't see any problem. Um, so we can just stop the recording.